thanks. So um, one day we'll, we'll make Google now look like Commodore 64, but uh, we're, st we're still kind of early on. And, and um, with, with the whole thing, AI stuff that's going on these days, um, you know, it's always been a dream of us. Uh, how do we make our connected devices so intelligent that they, they naturally fit into our lives? And the, the, the thing with these Commander Data and, and Samantha and um, whatever that guidance name is, Hal, Hal yes. Um, uh-huh. Yes, that was way before. <laughs> Uh, you know, the, the thing is, I think what, what human like intelligent is the fact that they're not book smart. They don't just give you a textbook to answer. They understand the world the same way we do, and AI, human like intelligent uh, gives you an answer that fits what you're doing because they understand what you're doing. They understand, you know, what you're doing and why you're doing it, and what's the purpose of what you're doing. And and that's what AI lacks today. And before I get into the, the demo, let me give you an example. Uh, and if I have time at the end, I'll, I'll ask the computer the same question here. But um, I have a calendar uh, meeting in my phone right now. Uh, for right now, um, according to it, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the host of a meeting with four people. And so when I arrived here, I uh, actually, I didn't ask it when I arrived here, but uh, I asked Google now and Siri, is everyone here? The problem with that question is there is no concrete um, words that defines the context. So Google now gave me a Wikipedia page for an album called Everyone Is Here, and Siri was too lazy to list all the contacts in the, in the address book. <laughs> they don't know what I'm talking about. They don't know what I mean by is everyone here. We do. Uh, our technology does, uh, and if I have time for that, I'll, I'll, I'll ask the computer later on. But the really exciting thing about what we do is we try to figure out what the question is before you even ask it. So when I arrived here today, uh, and it's gone from the screen right now, uh, let's see if I can get the right, press the right button, whoops. Uh, there's a little box underneath here that just shows up on the home screen. Uh, that box indicates that the phone has something to say. My phone has figured out why I'm, why I'm here. Because I'm the host of a meeting, uh, it's also predicting that I want to know if I can start a meeting. So if I press on this, on this box, I get a little me meeting update, which I have copied and put up on the screen here. Just, I copied this when I got here today. There's a couple of things you want to notice there. First of all, because it knows why I'm here, it silent my phone. You don't want to have your phone on, on high volume when, when you're hosting a meeting. The second thing is it's predicting that my first intent is to start a meeting. That means it would be very nice to know that someone is not coming. Nick and Mark, they're already here. Karen, my wife, uh, thinks it's uh, bad to leave a three-year-old and a five-year-old at home alone. So she did not come. And our AI figured that one out because, well, she's pretty far away. It doesn't, there's no sign that she's coming towards downtown. So n as a host, knowing that someone is not coming to the meeting will allow me to start the meeting. And I didn't have to do anything to actually get that information. The phone figured out why I'm here, what my intent is, and gave me the answer I needed. The way we do this is uh, we, we built this technology called Nigel. Uh, <coughs> Nigel is a kind of different kind of AI. Um, it's not designed with a specific concrete problem in mind. It's designed to model the world and to figure out not only what you're doing, but why you're doing it, what is the intent, and what's the end goal. Because if it understands all that, it can figure out how to help you, what information you need, what services you need, and bring them to you. Nigel then packages this into what we call an intelligence briefing and delivers them to any device. We don't build any front-end stuff, so we're going to rely on working with companies that actually have front-end um, applications that run in the background of any type of device. And I, I saw a few people here with glasses. Um, so the first, the app that, that I have running on my phone uh, it's called Automated. It's built by a company called Smarter Apps uh, out of Tel Aviv, Israel. Uh, it's an automation app, so if you heard of Tasker, you kind of have an idea what, what Automated is. Uh, you can get it from the App Store right today without our technology. But with our technology, you don't have to create rules anymore. You install it on your phone, and it just kind of figures out what's going on and does what it believes is normal. So we're going to start pretty small. And any, anything, by the way, anything I say from now on is not about the year 2020. This is what we expect to see this year in 2014. So we start pretty small. 
Uh, you get to the movie theater, it will, uh, by, by now Nigel has learned that the most normal thing to do at the movie theater is to silence your phone and turn down the screen brightness. It will happen automatically. Uh, when I got to the grocery, this is, this is my local Albertsons, uh, when I got there on Saturday, I don't really use a shopping list, so this is not my real shopping list. It was just for demo purposes. <laughs> but uh, it, uh, when I got to Albertsons, it automatically popped off my shopping list. I don't have to go to an app store, I don't have to manage anything on the phone. It figures out what I need and, and delivers it. So, we, so we're, we're focusing on HTML5, bringing HTML5 apps up. Developers who build HTML5 apps can participate without any code changes. But the real magic starts when we release the Nigel SDK for web apps, which will happen in a, in a few weeks. This is, it's ugly, no one has ever hired me for CSS. But um, <laughs> this is a demo we did for a carrier uh, in the Bay Area. Um, it was a shopping list. Uh, Nigel figured out that the reason why I was at the grocery store was to buy uh, some ingredients for a dinner recipe that I'm going to pl uh, I was planning on serving a dinner party. So what Nigel did is invited what he called Smart Agent, my, my dinner party, my dinner guest Smart Agent to participate in my in-store experience. So the reason why I was at Safeway was to make a good dinner or post a good dinner party later on. So one smart agent told me that his owner is lactose intolerant. Another smart agent told me that his owner likes some wine. No shopping list can do that today. But Nigel constantly delivers intelligence not only to the device but also to apps. Now, another thing to, to, to be able to do this very effectively, we're going to rely on uh, sensors real sensors and virtual sensors that developers built. Uh, one of the ones we've been playing with is um, speech and extracting emotions from speech. And we're actually exploring with the local company how to extract emotion from speech. So for example, if you pour the last milk into your cereal bowl and you kind of angrily goes, damn it, I'm out of milk, your phone could pick that up without you even touching the phone, add milk to your shopping list, notice the tone, and maybe notify your wife who's five blocks away from the grocery store and ask her if she can bring some milk home with, it, with her. And, and you know, we're all playing, playing with this. This is kind of working um, on a <laughs> uh, in our lab. But the, the real cool stuff is when technology becomes invisible. And it's not very different than speech. So imagine you have this romantic dinner with your wife and your wife says, hey, let's finish this evening upstairs. And as you guys go upstairs, your boss sends you a message saying, hey, I really want to be a part of the client meeting tomorrow. Please send me the details. It would be really nice if your phone understood that message, understands that it's not the time to interrupt you, replies to your boss, sends him the details, and let you do your stuff. <laughs> Understanding, again, what Nigel does is not to look up words or longitude and latitudes from a database. It's trying to extract why did you say that, why did your boss say this, why are you here, and then figure out what's the best way to respond. Now, that's cool and all, but uh, we don't want to download applications and put them on our phones. So we are already started exploring with some small custom Android developers. Our goal is to be on, on inside the operating system. We think that every device should have AI built in deeply into the OS. Um, we already started exploring with some custom Android people uh, with the goal of seeing the first Android, custom Android being launched this year with built-in AI. Uh, I imagine that kind of like having uh, something like automated being deeply integrated into the OS, but we want to get, by the end of this year, we want to get to the point where we start seeing real device experience, not an app experience. So, if you want to, you know, we're still kind of early on, but, but if, you, if you are building some sort of a background applications for Androids or, or any other OS, um, and you want to play around with the intelligence, talk to us. If you are a PHP or, or, or if, you, if you develop web apps and you want to have uh, early access to our SDK, talk to us. And, um, if you want to be a part of the, the beta testing of, of the new automated, that's going to launch in two or three weeks, depending on we can, how many bugs we can fix. Um, follow us or, or go to this website, actually, and, and sign up. Thank you. No questions? Yes.
Uh, we use this, the concept of, of personal clouds. Uh, first of all, we, we think everyone should own their own data. But in that cloud, what I expect to see, and I don't expect this in 2014 at all, uh, is personality agents who learn your... your I, I don't believe intuition is anything magic. I don't believe there's any magic about being a physical you know, life form. Uh, so if we can just understand what intuition is, you can replicate that in a smart agent. Now, I can't answer exactly what intuition is right now. You know, to me, what you're describing is you're, you're coming up with an answer, but you're not quite sure how you got there, right? And you got there somehow. Now, the trick with this is to get the sensor data in. If we don't have the sensor data, there's nothing you can do on the, on the, on the, on the software side. So sensor become do or die. Um, exactly. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> so, uh, well, you know how all, I don't know if I'm answering your question, I'm not sure if I quite understand, uh, not sure what, what you're trying to get at. Well, if, if I'm a developer, uh -huh. I want to use Nigel as a platform for artificial Okay. Ah, um, you don't teach it. You you just f send back a bunch of sensor data. You send back sensor data. All sensor data are modeled in a very specific way, and we're not so actually. Uh, right, well, uh, as it works right now, uh, it's a supermarket. It doesn't matter if it's Safeway or Albertsons. But so, so if I walk into any grocery store, I can teach it to send me, show me my shopping. Yes. So Nigel learns two ways. It learns your habits based on how you use your device. Um, and it learns what we call more of a crowdsourcing of intelligence. So, so for example, that it, the fact that it uh, silenced their phone at the movie theater right now uh, is a result of multiple people doing that at the movie theaters. And so Nigel has gotten to a point where it seems fairly normal and has a very, um, uh, it believes very much that that's what you want to do. So, so it's observation. N Nigel observes. That's why you just feed the sensor data back, modeled in a very, very specific way. Um, and all Nigel does is to observe. Okay, at the movie theater, it seems like, you know, 999 out of 1,000 people silence their phone. Okay, that must be normal. Yes, <laughs> especially if you don't want to get shot. <laughs> Uh, probably, but not today. We don't have that modeled. That's but you guys are um, I would have to understand more. <laughs> you, you know, as a startup, you, you try to focus on where you're going to get the traction. And so I, I think Nigel can be used for a lot of stuff.
someone else could use that information for any various purposes or it's not encrypted. Yeah, so, so uh, privacy is, uh, um, I, I could spend an hour talking about privacy, what, what we've done, so I'm going to try and keep it brief. So you know how every, th there's two things with privacy. Number one is uh, where is your data and who owns it? And second of all, uh, even if you own your own data, but there's a company that kind of controls everything, you're still kind of their slave. So one of the things that we really wanted to make sure of is the internet remains decentralized with no one in control. So number one thing, every Android phone connects to Google Server Farm. Every time you start a Facebook application, you're connected to Facebook Server Farm. Um, I believe that the, the best thing that uh, how the world should look like is every connected device you have connects to your personal cloud. Everything flies into your cloud, you own everything, and you can, you can uh, host your cloud anywhere you want. So that's what we've done. We created, an, oh, uh, it's going to be an open source uh, personal cloud that runs smart agents and blah, blah, blah. You can host it anywhere you want. Uh, the second thing we've done is Nigel is not going to be a Chimera system server farm. In fact, well, in the beginning, we're going to run a couple of Nigel uh, modules. Uh, one is now li live uh, physically in Houston, and we're going to uh, power one up in, in Europe uh, in the next few months. But our goal is to license Nigel to what we call primary and secondary network operators, primary being the AT&Ts and Comcast of the world, secondary being the airport or your local coffee house that, that offers some sort of Wi-Fi access to their customers. So there's a gazillion of these Nigels out there, all programmed in with cultural differences or regional differences. And end result is you own your own data and no one, no one entity controls all the intelligence on, on the network. So, <clears throat> Mo, before you take any other questions, because in the area of artificial intelligence, I imagine you could be here for another hour yes. answering <laughs> these questions. Um, will you be available afterwards to talk yes. to folks? So, Mo will be available. Until then, thank you very much. Thank you.